Today we're going to talk about Cribble. This is one of the most amazing products out there. Um, it is a fast-growing company. It is a great, it's a great tool. I just want to make it very clear. I'm not getting paid for any of this. I've just happened to use Cribble over the time, and I've been very pleased with what they do. They take stuff that has caused me trouble, and I can just use Cribble on it, and it just seems to fix it. I'm right here on the Cribble's website, which is HTTPS Cribble.io. I just love the con what it says right here. Uh, oh, we moved. Simplified data management. That's really what Cribble's for. Is you got a bunch of data, whether you got log serve, you got syslog, you got systems coming from multiple locations. You want to change up your logs. You want to modify them. You want to change, do uh, fi uh, improve the way you store things, retrieve things. Cribble is the way to get control of your data and save a lot of costs and time in managing what you've got. So for the basic principle of this, I'm just going to show how to install Cribble. And so the first thing I did is I went to Cribble Download and I went and downloaded the software and I run and I just download it on my system. We can actually see it over here. There's Cribble and all I'm going to do is tar. Well, let's go follow the instructions first. So I have a brand new Linux box. It's been downloaded on here. I've called it YouTube Cribble. Um, it's just a nice little uh, Ubuntu box. If I type in Cribble stream installation guide. Uh, the first, uh, you get this getting started guide. I just open that up. It'll walk you right through it. But it's basically you want to be cloud or self-hosted. They'll let you host some uh, Cribble up on the cloud. And if not, you can put it on your own own system. That's what I recommend doing. Cribble does have a paid for product, but for home use and for a lot of small projects, you don't need to pay for Cribble. You can, they're down, their free version is more than enough processing, more than enough uh, licensing for you. But anyway, all you need to run it is a Linux 64-bit kernel, you like Ubuntu, Debian, RHEL, etc. It's got some minimum system requirements for physical cores, 8 gigs of RAM, above and beyond your OSVM. That's a pretty... Um, uh, um, I, I've never even needed that much because that's a lot of data being ingested. But just just general rule, you got that. Then browser support, um, and then you need to make sure that you open up uh, port 9000. There are other ports you can open, but for a standalone Cribble instance, just put 9000 open. This this class is this video is not about all the deep cool features of Cribble. If you want to do that, there's Splunk. There is sorry Cribble University. You can just go to their website, type Cribble University in, in like Google. You'll find it. And it's free, and they t they'll teach you through all the different architectures and how you can use Cribble deployers and workload management, work nodes, and all that sort of stuff. That's not the, of here. All you need is port 9000 open for right now, and then you'll open up any port you want data to come into on Cribble. But for me, for installing Cribble, it's just port 9000. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go sudo ufw allow uh, 9000. TCP. And so if I go to sudo UFW status, UFW activate, UFW activate. Yeah. Nope. It's not activate. It is enabled. I think I do this enough. I'd remember. Yep, I'm gonna to to lose my SC. I'm gonna lose my SSH session. No problem. All right, UFW status. Pseudo UFW status. It's open and port 9000 and 9000 TCP uh, for v, uh, IPv6 is open. All right, I'm good to go. Now what I want to do is I'm going to let's just go sudo. And if I just follow the instructions down here. In order to install it, I just basically need to put in tar minus xvcf. So tar minus xvcf minus opt. And I'm going to put it right there and opt. And we can go, now if we just go opt cribble, bin, so opt cribble, bin, 
start. Let me put Kribble in there. Kribble, start. And Kribble starting. And you can use the additional commands, Kribble start, Kribble stop, or get your status. And so if I want to see Kribble status, I just type in status, and away we go. It's running, it gives me the version, everything like that. Some other things you should do, you should probably run Kribble as Kribble. You should enable to start at startup. All those are here in the documentation. I'll, I'll do a different video on that for now, but for now, we've got Kribble up and running and we can see that by just using my address. And port 9000. It's going to ask me to log in. Again, I can get my password. Default password is admin admin. So I'll just come in and I'll just put in admin admin. Don't bother to save because it's going to make me change it right here. So I'm going to go lame. And I'm going to just go register. All they want to do is get you to register so you can get this gets you the free license. You, you can skip it if you want to. I'm going to make a new password. I'll change my password. This time I will save it. And now I have Kribble up and running. That's as simple as it was. I went to Kribble download. I downloaded. I chose the latest version, Edge and Stream, you, they're both, doesn't matter, they're the same, they just have different functionalities uh, the way they run, so just go grab that for x64, and I just downloaded it, and then I moved it over onto my, onto my system, and I untarred it to slash opt, and then I just opt, cribble, bin, cribble, start, and away it goes. Once I make sure your port 9000 is open, then you go to the system and use colon 9000. Go to the IP address, colon 9000, and you're good to go. That's all it takes to install Kribble. Next, we're going to talk about uh, some features such as how to get data in and things like that. So hope you'll keep coming back and watching these videos.